Bold TV. Top of the morning to you, wherever it is you are viewing beautiful, outstanding ladies with disabilities television, Bold TV. On your Facebook or YouTube screen right about now, it's another Saturday, 10.30 a.m. on your dial, and we are here to bring to you topical issues as it affects and concerns women and girls with disability around us. And today is not going to be an exception. I'm here um, to bring to you. I am the co-host for today's edition, and I have my fellow co-host and a guest more or less irregular and together we shall be talking about the forthcoming international white cane in nigeria but before we dive into our conversation let me introduce myself and my ladies would follow suit my name is uruato misi adiefa i'm a broadcast journalist a sound engineer a gender and disability rights advocate and the executive director of popular abilities foundation a member and a co-host on Bold TV. Feels really good to be here this Saturday, Saturday morning. And uh, just a, 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 a way of further introducing myself, I'm based in Abel Buta, the state capital of Ubu, Southwest Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, hey, hi everyone. Good morning. Hi everybody. My name is Freddy Andresian. A member of Bold Hearts Initiative, the Media of Faker Foundation. I just wheelchair from spinal cord injury, and it's good to be here for another episode. You are all welcome. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Ulu Akemi Udu Soya from the Eagles Voice International for Disability Rights, and I'm based in Lagos. I also have visual impairment. I would like to be specific that I am blind by a chunk of disability. Yeah, and it's nice to be here on board. Thank you very much, ladies, uh, for joining on the program today. And like I said during the introduction, we are celebrating more or less like marking the International White Cane and Safety Day for Blind and Visually Impaired Persons. Uh, the International White Cane and Safety Day is a global celebration for blind and visually impaired persons across the world. Every 15th of October is the day to celebrate independence, mobility, resilience of blind and visually impaired persons across the world. The White Cane is a tool and it is not just a tool, it is a beacon of hope and resilience for blind and visually impaired persons. Uh, the white cane is used for mobility, for independence, for identity sake, for blind and visually impaired persons. And so that has been set aside to visually impaired persons across the world in whatever sphere of life it is. And right here on Bold TV, we are not just celebrating the resilience and independence of blind and impaired women, we are also going to be talking about how this. White cane wouldn't just be a tool that, uh, you know, we, we just can't talk about because it's the 15th of October. But how then do we begin to see this as a means to an end and, you know, as a means to an end of having absolute inclusion for blind uh, and access for blind and visually impaired persons. And according to the theme for this year is promoting inclusion, celebrating abilities and eating for access for blind and visually impaired persons. So it means that it's an all-encompassing celebration uh, where, you know, we could talk about inclusion, talk about abilities and disabilities, and also see how we can embrace access to and visually impaired persons. Um, to start with, I was, you know, on the streets of Nigeria, and I've got some ladies who are not in the studio who are visually impaired ladies who would like to tell us uh, some of the importance, you know, some of the reasons why they use the white cane, what the white cane means to them. And when we do come back, we would continue the conversation right here. Hey guys, hi friends. My name is Choma Precious. You can call me the golden eyes that produces golden slides. As you all know, I'm a lady with visual impairment. Today is our international white cane day. Hooray! This symbolizes freedom for every visual impaired 
every blind person you see out there, this symbolizes mobility, it symbolizes accessibility for persons with living with visual impairment. So join us today as we advocate for freedom, inclusion, accessibility for all. Mm -hmm. Love you guys. I'm Philomena Nweze. I'm a resident in Abuja, FCT. As a visually impaired woman, my age because it gives me this sense of independence. Because with my wife around, even if I find myself in a strange place, I appreciate my Hey everyone, my name is Gladys Ipama, the women leader of Nigeria Association of the Blind. I'm using this white cane to let the whole world know today that uh, the white cane is used for uh, detecting obstacles on the way. With this white cane, I can travel places detecting obstacles on my way. Even the gutters, potholes, I can get to anywhere with this uh, white cane. And women don't, that don't use white cane, um, it could be that they have um, human um, aid instead of the uh, guide cane. But without human aid, you can make use of this white cane to go anywhere. It's very, very important. And to let the drivers, the passerbys, to know that the white cane also is to call on, to call on audience of help. Thank you. This is white cane demonstration demonstrated by Olua Tomisin Olatayo. What the white cane does for visually impaired persons and persons who are blind is that it helps them stay independent. It is a symbol of freedom. As you can see, tapping, tapping the white cane helps her to ensure she stays on the walkway. Welcome back and it's still Bo TV and we're still here talking about the International White Cane and Safety Day for Blind and Visually Impaired Persons. And just like you've heard the ladies right there, they talked about what the white cane means to them. It's a means to get around, it's a means to identify obstacles, it's a means to show identity. I mean, you're standing somewhere in the middle of the road or out beside the road or by anywhere. And then people see you with the white cane, they see that, oh, this is a blind person. And then they can easily just approach you and all of that. And it's also a means of confidence. Okay, so as a blind person, you don't even know where you are. But with the white cane, you are able to feel your environment. You are able to see um, what you need to see at that particular point in time. And you're able to ask for the right kind of help because, of course, you have the white cane with you. And, I mean... Here you have ladies saying all of those things. So that, that nullifies the popular statement we hear in the visually impaired community that uh, ladies do not use the white cane. Yeah, my ladies use the white cane. And I'm sure Kemi also uses the white cane. Don't you, Kemi? Oh my God. Definitely, I do use it. Like, I, I, no matter uh -huh. how long when I'm with a sighted person, I have to make sure that I use the white cane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and that's awesome. So what does it mean to you? I mean, how would you uh, say the white cane is important to you as a visually impaired person? Okay, so for me, I'll say that the white cane is just like um, like a tool that is, you know, used to, will I say, identify me even before I see something, right? So because the white cane is white in color and it's, it's able to show or tell someone that well, this person that is using this cane is you know having a vision impairment right so and it shows it also helps me so i use it to navigate even like i said when i'm with someone or not the white cane i always ensure that i use it it's because hey it speaks for me right because yeah as long as the white cane doesn't talk quite all right but before i you know get to hit an obstacle the white cane is able to point to me that oh something is either I or low and all that yeah so that's what it means to me to me it means independence it means productivity and it means resilience thank you okay so um thank you so much for that submission and uh one point that you mentioned that stood out for me is the fact that you talked about um even when you have a sighted guide you're still with your guide kid you're still with your white kid it shows that um, 
you're trying to bring emphasis into that independent nature of yourself. I know that a lot of persons are not trained to actually guide blind and visually impaired persons. To be as able, a nation begin to recognize the, the white kid as a part of us, as a part of the independence and mobility of blind and visually impaired persons. Now, this question uh, is born out of the fact that um, something like this comes on every year. I mean, I remember having something like this episode last year, and now we're talking about it again. Next year, we're still going to talk about it. But how do we begin to see the white cane as a part of us? Um, the white cane is still a very expensive tool. Um, import duties are still being paid. So what do we need to do? Uh, is it that we are not we are not advocating or um, creating awareness or talking about these issues enough? How do we, as a people, as you know, persons with disabilities, come together to see that the white thing is a part of us and we can begin to promote inclusion from that angle? But frankly, I'd like you to jump this one. All right, thank you very much. Um, first of all. I think it's the best on the um, disability community, especially the blind and visually impaired community, to, should I say, raise or amplify the importance of the white skin. Because I've seen where white paint are available, and persons with visual impairment don't want it, because they, are the, they have other ways of moving around, which is depending on someone to guide you, as it were. So I've seen instances where it seems like the white cane is the alternative and not the way to be able to move around or be independent. So one of the things that has to be really clear is how important is the white cane to a person with visual impairment or a person who is blind. And that will come from the users, you know, the white cane users. It's like me as a person with mobility impairment using a wheelchair. I can stand and declare how valuable the wheelchair is to me because without the wheelchair, I am not mobility, um, able to um, move around and have access to different spaces. So first of all, learning or leaning that importance to the white cane is going to be so crucial. So a lot of awareness on the importance for the blind community as well as for the disability community. So I think that that has to be flagged really. And then after having that conversation or during the conversation, because it's not after and after, it's going to go on at the same time. I think it's also important for society and the public to understand the importance or the significance of it were of the white skin, because some people don't understand it's how much more the safety. So for instance, you see a person using the white cane, and somehow because we want to help the person, you feel you should go and hold the white cane. <laughs> you should go and hold the white cane and drag the person and say, come, let me guide you. I'm like, no, 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 no. That. The white cane is serving as you know a tool for guidance. So if you want to assist the person in any way or for whatever reason without the person asking, we need to approach the person to require if that person needs assistance beyond the use of the white cane. So I've said two things in a nutshell. I've said that the persons in the visually impaired community and the blind community actually need to show how important the white cane is. And I know why I'm saying this. Uh, assistive devices are important, but I've seen that in the disability community, depending on what you did rehabilitation with, or depending on your adaptability, you may not want to use all assistive devices. So it's important to point how important it is. The second one would be that speaking to the public, I also want the public to know and be able to identify and, should I say, develop what a white cane etiquette in safety. So that if a person is using a white cane, somebody doesn't go put in the white cane and be like, come, let me help you. Um, again, I mean to the example, which is using a wheelchair, when you are sitting down, mind your business, and because they said, oh, let's move to a place, a person doesn't ask for your permission, a person just pushes your wheelchair. <laughs> you know, a person doesn't understand that, hey, look, you're pushing me, don't push, I mean, let, let's operate on this. So once we need to educate more, once we need to raise more awareness around it. I think finally, what I'm going to also say is this, in places where they offer official re rehabilitation, it may be important to add in the curriculum the use of white cane. I don't know if it happens in all visually uh, visual rehabilitation centers or state-owned visual rehabilitation centers. But I think in the curriculum for rehabilitation, the white cane has to be made somehow compulsory because I, again, I've seen that a lot of persons with visual impairment don't feel it's important. As long as they have somebody that they hold the shoulder and they move, and I don't see them using it. So that's what I'll say. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that beautiful submission right there. And
And that's one of our major uh, duty here to push and advocate for the use and recognition of the white cane. So you as a visually impaired person, you play your part, use the white cane and use it correctly. And while members of the society also play their part in recognizing what the white cane symbolizes. The white cane is not for you to degrade a visually impaired person. I mean, pulling your white cane instead of holding their hands or asking them questions is very disrespectful and degrading. And so uh, thank you so much for that submission. I just would like Kemi uh, to add, uh, you know, one or two to this wow. conversation. Okay. All right, so awesome. So I feel that um, I'm, what I'm going to say is just like a, well, I say a seconding or an agreement to what Frankie has said, because when it comes to white cane, now let's look at the, the let's say, let's go down the foundation. We have associations that are strictly for the blind or visually impaired persons, right? I believe that there are some, some of those awareness or advocacy may not actually need you spending dollars and millions right to achieve it can just be very very little things right i feel that if all associations that are of the blind and for the blind and for instance october 15 we're talking about the independence and the use or the commemoration of the cane right of the white cane we could all come out in one voice not that Kano State will be saying white cane is for productivity and Ogun State will be saying white cane is for resilience, right? Let us all come out with one voice, speak and educate. I've come across a lot of persons that will be like, oh, okay, and you use this stick. And I'm like, no, it's not a stick. It is a white cane. It is a guide cane. It is a cane guide. So even to an extent, I've seen persons, you know, who are visually impaired. I can never forget the experience. I was in a battle. And I think my mom was with me and she was like, oh, look at this person. Like that. The person comfortably, confidently uses the white cane and the person was begging. So imagine someone who is literate using the white cane and meets, I mean, you know, someone who is literate meets a person who is using white cane with that kind of experience, right? Like they say, first impression counts. It's going to linger for a long time. So uh, just like uh, I've earlier stated, I feel that associations, organizations, or for, you know, organizations that have to do with things, or cater for persons who are visually impaired should also stand with one voice and let's commemorate the day with one voice for instance if we're having a national protest right it's a national protest everybody's saying the same thing we don't want you know increase in fuel right and it is national at the same time at the same day so if we all can come out with one voice to speak and educate the public on the essence or the use of the white cane, the world could be a better place because not everyone actually understands or you know knows the importance of the cane and as well as to we the visual impact persons who are the you know user of the cane guide as well i think they also need to be you know well, let's say self-confidence because i've met i think few ladies who are like ah, what happened imagine someone going on a commercial bus and coming to a location without cane and i'm like wow you are a, you are a giant though like you left your house and came to the office without a cane guide what did you say eh, nah, you know if i use it it will diminish my beauty i'm like really if you fall inside a ditch, right, won't your beauty diminish at that moment? So I feel that there needs to also be like the sub building the self confidence of the user of the cane to confidently use it, and they should also know the meaning, the value of this cane. It's not that when you're using the cane, it can entirely tell you, okay, yeah, yeah, no should be. Okay, yeah, in Ojota. Okay, yeah, in this. No, but at least to let people who are not the user to identify to say, okay, my need assistance, or if anything, or if anything happens, or they meet you at anywhere, they can be able to identify you to say, okay, this person has a visual impairment. So I feel that you know awareness cannot be overemphasized. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what is our end goal, mm -hmm. what are we targeting, and also we who are the users, we need to be confident of our use of the white cane. It does not reduce your beauty, neither does it remove your thoughts in your brain, right? Neither does it reduce your productivity. It's just a symbol for people to identify you as, oh, this person is a visually impaired person and may or may not require assistance so that you will not be labeled, you know, under the charity term, like, oh, you're begging or what have you. So that's what I have to hand. Well, thank you so much for that submission. And I mean, I, I, I like to appreciate the, 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 the point that you talked about, like I said earlier, this year's theme is promoting inclusion, celebrating abilities, and advocating for access for blind and visually impaired persons. And that topic, advocating for access, brings me to the next question, uh, which 
talks about how do we still as a people <laughs> today i don't know I, I i really don't want to draw so much on the government i feel like there's so much other things that we also can do so how do we as a people advocate for access and i mean we, we've started mentioning some of the points but what are the access do we even know what accessibility means to a visually impaired person so i would like Kemi to talk about this she's a visually impaired person and he will raise the shoes they say knows where he pinches so what is access what does accessibility means to you okay so for accessibility i feel that in nigeria the, the, the part of the country which we are when you tell even the elite of the elite when they hear accessibility they feel it's based on assumptions which should not be and like you said it's he that wears the shoes even sometimes he that wears the shoes sometimes i don't even know how it feels it's anyways but accessibility actually means it connotes inclusion it means able to um, independently use or you know make use of either a material a building or what have you so for instance if you know as a blind person or a visually impaired person i won't be able to read print materials right but how can i be able to independently read it perhaps the material could be in some um, and not just you know snapping it with your phone and thinking that it might be accessible no but there are also you know factors to the accessibility as well it could be in soft copies that you know can be compatible to the screen yes right that is accessibility accessibility for me as well could be maybe navigating a path so let's say from point a to point d while going through the path without a sighted person around me using my white cane or my cane guide i can independently tap on the floor like you know tip tap tip tap with my cane and it's going to be you know i know that there's nothing on the floor i can move independently but when there is like a drainage an open drainage i mean open ditch and i'm going remember i told you and that is one assumption people think that uh, the white cane speaks that is a fallacy right and even the one that speaks that has gps i wonder if we can even use this in nigeria this one that our network is not that strong so i feel that accessibility in that area is having the floor to be very smooth having you know uh walkable walk areas not a place where you, yeah i know that fingers are not equal yeah all fingers are not equal so people might not have money to buy you know or to rent a market space for me also selling your things on the you know walkway where pedestrians are even meant to manage to walk is also an obstacle for you know a visually impaired person the person cannot navigate independently on that path so accessibility is making sure that it's, it's clear of obstacle for a visually impaired person accessibility is making sure that whatever is maybe in video format you know some people like to just put some things on whatsapp tiktok and wm meanwhile there is some graphics design and yet it's not talking i can't read what is there and you say you're an organization that caters for the i mean blind or person with disability that is not accessibility whatever you're doing make sure that it meets a need either visually impaired either hearing impaired either wheelchair users or what have you make sure that that need is you know is met that is accessibility to me thank you thank you so much i'm uh, talking about image description and i mean artificial intelligence has come over and it has helped us you can easily just put your pictures or your video on your ai app and ask for an image description and trust me ai will do a very beautiful job so you can always caption your images caption your videos to ensure that persons with visual impairments have access to that material and so we, we, we would continue the education on that light and but for now we need to wrap things up on this side of the program but before we go i want to reiterate something that i have said on the show before and i, I think it was uh freaky that mentioned the fact that sometimes people do not know how to offer assistance uh, to persons with visual impairment and so when you see a person with visual impairment you just grab them by their arm or you just pull them by the white cane and then you're dragging them or you just say eh, eh, eh. You, you not tell them oh yeah move to the left move to the left move to the right and then or you are even assisting a visually impaired person you say hey, oh yeah wait here and you leave them in the middle of the road because you want to grab something so and that would bring me to give us this very very um short acronym and so when you want to help or you want to assist a visually impaired person please let's practice the aloha acronym a means ask so when you approach a visually impaired person you say hello um i see you here do you need help ask first l means listen and then when you ask you listen to what the person has to say oh hi okay i don't need help i'm waiting for someone oh okay i need help i need to cross to the other side i am going to so, 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 so. you listen to what they don't assume they don't know what they are saying 
because it's easy for persons without disabilities to assume that as a person with disability you need to be think i mean you need they need to think for you and so listen first if the person is confused you will know and then you can shed more light on whatever is making them feel confused and all is observed so as they are speaking look at what they are talking about oh the person needs to cross an highway is this highway crossable or we could use the pedestrian bridge or the overhead bridge so you observe the workability of what they are talking about and then you explain that okay i need i, I want to cross you really but you cannot cross the highway we will need to go through the pedestrian walkway explain what you're about to do that makes it polite and respectful and h means you offer the help so you actually offer the help in accordance to how the person with visual impairment needs the help so if they say that this is what they need please that is what they need except in cases where you have explained and they've agreed to your own observation that way is when you can do it your own way or the way you think is best first let them be in the know so that you are not sued for kidnapping or trying to hurt someone when in actual sense you are trying to help and the last a on aloha acronym is ask again so after you must have gotten the person to the other side of the road like they wanted ask oh are you okay is that all you want would you be fine here? Ask to be sure that your help has really hit the mark. Thank you so much uh, for listening to that. And please let's endeavor to practice aloha as we celebrate the International White Cane and Safety Day. Let's be safe with our vision in bed person. So before we go, I would just like my ladies to share their goodwill messages to blind and visually impaired persons out there as we celebrate the International White Cane Day. Happy International White Cane and Safety Day. Stay safe know more about the white cane and remember to practice aloha hey. as a blind or visually impaired you know cane users endeavor to be very confident using your cane and you are not the first neither will you be the last person to use the white cane for independence or productivity so go out there and keep being the person whom you are happy international white cane safety Day. and remember aloha <laughs> thank you ladies for helping to reiterate that i really do appreciate your presence on the show today thank you so much for your time and efforts to be here it, it was really a thing to make this recording uh, a success and thank god we are here <laughs> special thanks to you our amazing viewers our amazing lovers out there keep loving us keep sharing keep liking keep commenting and we hope you join us again for a super episode of the show next week saturday 10 30 a.m with another beautiful co-host a beautiful outstanding ladies with disabilities television bow tv if you'd like to support us in any way or form uh you'll get to see some of the channels by which you could do that on the screen if you'd like to visit our page you'd like to you know know more about what we do see our videos share our videos uh you can do that on facebook and youtube you see as it's being displayed on the screen as well for your use thank you so much for joining us till we meet again next week i say bye bye on behalf of the ladies bye bye happy international white cane and safety day Like our Facebook page www.facebook.com forward slash Bold Heart Network. Follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash at Bold TV underscore Bold Hearts. Thank you. is bold tv